or three questions. What do you do? I am actually the owner of Pyramids Hotel in Allen, Texas. All right. Pyramids, as you may have guessed, being Egyptian by birth. So you're Egyptian. Egyptian by birth, American by choice. So let me ask you this. What has it been like being a Muslim in America? No, no, no. In Dallas, Fort Worth. I'll tell you uh, two stories. Uh, one, I was on a program actually uh, in the First Baptist Church of Ireland. That was the first weekend after September 11th. And I was invited to a senior place. So I went in early. Usually I go early. I'm known in my community for being on time. But, you know, that's a sin that I'll have to deal with. And I sat in the corner. I remember a gentleman and his wife came early too. And he looked at me and he said, uh, you know, so you're new here. I said, yeah. And I said, well, what are you, where are you from? And so I told him. And he said, well, you know, who are you? Because he thought I actually was part of the congregation. I said, no, actually I'm the speaker today. Now at that time I was 41 years old. And his impression of Islam and Muslims was, he looked at me and actually sized me. I was sitting next to him and he said, well, shouldn't you be a little bit older with a beard? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I am a Muslim. This is why, the way I look. So this is kind of one of the stories that I had to deal with. Another one that I will tell you that was the, the highlight, uh, you know, that, that I really enjoyed, you know, telling is I was also in a program and a lady from Beaumont called the program and asked, and this was exactly like four days after September 11th, I think it was Sunday after September 11th, and she said, you know, we need to know more about you. You, in this case, being Muslims, because knowledge leads to understanding, and understanding leads to acceptance. And I took that to heart, and I think our community took that to heart, and since then we stopped being a very close community, because I can almost guarantee you that 12 years ago, we were very, very reluctant to come into here. So the highlight of this whole issue is that looking at this and seeing people standing, actually, is a big accomplishment in our case. Because we're very much <laughs> For the Christians that are here, what can they do to build relationships? I'm going to tell them a story. I mean, since we next to history chairs, he told stories. So I'm going to tell you another story. I'm going to. I feel that empathy would always kind of make you understand what the person on the other side is going through. So I'm going to give you another story. That is a true story. We live in Kapel. I have a wife and three children. My wife is German, by the way, so she is loving Imam Zia today for mentioning all these German food. Which I get lectures about that all the time. And. It was uh, 10 days after 9-11 again, and again, I'm, I'm telling you all this about 9-11 attention because this is really where we define ourselves. It really defines who we are, who do we want to be, what is it that we're going to have to do in this country to be accepted and be part of it. So I was actually on a radio program and I heard someone that said that their house is being shot at that day. It was a family in Capel. This is a true story of Pakistani origin. And they had three shots fired at their house that day. And we went there and had a press conference, you know, to ask for tolerance. The mayor of Capella at that time came and so on and so forth. And this was kind of a low point in my life, but I'm going to tell you how I felt as an American Muslim. I went home. My oldest son has a room in front of the house. For 10 days, we asked my son Tarek to move into his brother's room in the, on the other side of the house for fear of his life. And I tell this story to everybody who's a Baptist, because obviously we hear a lot of wonderful stories about Baptists, that sometimes misunderstanding and miscommunication can lead to that. And I'm going to ask you as an American, and more importantly as a Christian, would you want to live in a situation like that? Where you're at your own home, fearful for your life because somebody might shoot something at your window and God forbid hurts you or hurt your kids. So I like to tell this story because that's what leads to this. Sometimes words can be very dangerous and I can almost guarantee you that that was somebody took words and just translated them into action that day. And that's why I always caution against you know hate speech and so on and so forth. And I want to comfort your congregation by the way. 
The first time I met him was two months ago, and he started the conversation just to let you know he didn't ever compromise on him being conservative, Baptist, evangelical, Texan, you know all that. He started the conversation. <laughs> so I really want to make sure that he didn't sell out. I'm going to comfort you. No, we're not taking over your church. Let me comfort you there too. But he started the conversation with that what he believes, and he actually 